everyone. Thanks for being here today. Uh, my name is Megan Dudenhafer, and I'm an undergraduate in the Department of Physiology and Zoology. And I spent this summer in Lycopia, Kenya, studying an invasive cactus species with Dr. Jacob Goheen and Anne Marie Hodge. So this is Kenya, in case anyone didn't know where it was. And we were specifically located in central Kenya, um, which is called Lakipia, Kenya. This area is really interesting. There's a lot of different uh, property types. So on one hand, you have wildlife conservancies where wildlife is protected. And on the other hand, you have like private commercial ranches where a lot of cows and goats are kept. Same with community land where it's mostly rangeland area. And it's uh, very near Mount Kenya. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. So this is what we are studying, Opuncha stricta. It's commonly known as the prickly pear cactus. You guys might have heard of it. It's um, native in North and South America, but it's become really invasive in other areas of the world, um, including South Africa, Kenya, the Mediterranean, um, Israel, Australia. And it's really detrimental. Uh, so in this area, the majority of the locals are pastoralists, and so they rely really heavily on rangeland and their livestock for their livelihoods. And one problem is that livestock will eat this prickly pear cactus, and the spines will get stuck in their throat and they'll actually die, which if your entire livelihood depends on a couple of cows and goats, it's, um, it's a big deal. And then it also decreases rangeland quality. It takes the place of different native species that cows and goats can graze on. It also has ecological problems. This area has a really high abundance of wildlife. And so the cactus actually threatens the native wildlife and biodiversity. So the reason the cactus spreads so quickly is because of baboons. So essentially what happens is the baboons will eat the prickly pear fruits and in each fruit, there's about 100 seeds. And the baboons can eat a ton of these fruits. And so the seeds will go through their digestive system. And what happens is called gut and mouth treatment. So the stomach acid of the baboons actually removes protective coating around the seeds. So then, when it's defecated out, the seeds actually germinate a lot quicker than they would have if they just fell to the ground and it occurred without the baboons. Uh, the baboons also move large distances every day from 8 to 12 kilometers. And so this entire time they're moving, they're spreading the cactus spatially because they defecate everywhere they go. <laughs> and <laughs> sorry, I spent all summer looking through baboon poop, so it's just funny calling it defecation. <laughs> um, uh, and then we have this rodent, the fringe-tailed gerbil, Gerbiliscus robustus. These guys are super cute. Um, and unlike the baboons, when they actually eat cactus seeds, they kill them. So they remove the little part of the seed inside the hole and consume it. So these guys have the potential to keep the cactus from spreading to different areas. So based on this information, we have two hypotheses. The first one is for seed dispersal. So essentially what happens is the baboon consumes the fruit and disperses the seeds, moves the cactus to new areas. And that facilitates cactus establishment. Whereas if we include the gerbil in this, the baboon consumes the seeds from the fruit, but they aren't dispersed because the rodent will actually eat the seeds out of the baboon poop, which is fascinating in my opinion. Um, and this has the potential to reduce cactus establishment. So based on this information, we focused on this relationship. So for our, our hypothesis, we predicted that rodents would consume the seeds out of baboon feces, which sounds ridiculous, but we saw it occur a lot of times, and that the rodents will actually choose to eat seeds out of baboon feces versus just a pile of seeds, showing that they actually prefer the poop for some reason. <laughs> and so to do this, we set up a bunch of camera traps, which are motion censored. We leave them out for three nights, and we'd have them pointed at a piece of baboon poop collected by me. <laughs> 
and then a pile of seeds that we'd taken out of baboon poop so that they had basically the same treatment. Um, and we were looking to see which one was preferred by these rodents. And so you can see here, that's a picture of Drupaliscus robustus. And this little blurry thing right next to its nose is a piece of poop that it's about to eat out of. And this is what we found. Uh, surprisingly, the rodents consumed the seeds from the baboon feces more often than they chose to eat the pile of seeds that were already there and clean. Um, and so you can see evidence of seed predation, the little seed holes that have been left behind, uh, and then the pile of seeds that haven't really been touched. Uh, and so we took this and we looked at it, and there's a much higher visitation for the feces and the seeds versus the seeds only. Um, the only, we came up with a few reasons why we thought this occurred. So these rodents are nocturnal and they primarily use their sense of smell to locate food. And so our thought is that since baboon feces are really, really odorous, that it's, they could have possibly learned to associate that smell with a very large quantity of seeds and a large food resource. Because when the fruits drop to the ground, there's only about 100 seeds in each fruit. And that's only 100 seeds for this rodent. But if they find a piece of baboon poop, there's up to 1,000 seeds in each one. So it's a really large resource for these rodents. Uh, and based on this information, we then looked at the overall relationship again. So we were wondering if without seed predation by gerbils, would there be more cactus? And so my advisor's done a lot of research in Kenya uh, with exclosure experiments. So essentially what he does is he builds fences in Kenya and looks at what happens when large mammals are kept out of these areas. And so his research has demonstrated that large mammals such as elephants, when they're kept out of an area, there's higher levels of rodents. So it's possible that when there are large mammals in the area, there's less rodents and there's a higher number of cactus in this area. So it's an indirect positive effect. Um, and since Lakipia Kenya is full of different types of properties, we were able to look at this relationship and see if it actually occurred in the natural world. So the different property types on wildlife conservancies, obviously elephants and large mammals are tolerated and they're encouraged to be there. Whereas on private ranch land, they're not allowed to be or they're discouraged from being in this area. And so if we're correct about this, we would expect higher numbers of cactus in the conservancies area and lower numbers of cactus in ranch land. And um, thanks to Anne Marie, we actually have that data. And so it's compatible with our hypothesis about this. So there's actually more cactus where there are more large mammals and less cactus where there is high levels of rodents, which is a really interesting implication. It's showing that these rodents are disrupting a seed dispersal process and they're having a larger effect than we would have thought because of this. And so this experience was really amazing for me. I'm an undergrad, so I haven't had a lot of research experience yet. Um, and so I, I gained a lot of valuable experience designing and implementing this project. I hit a lot of roadblocks, but um, as you can see, I actually came up with some interesting findings and I'm working on publishing this with the help of Anne-Marie and Dr. Jacob Goheen. And uh, it's, this experience is gonna better prepare me for graduate school. And one day I'd really like to work in wildlife education and maybe more people will be interested in poop like I am. <laughs> it's really interesting. That was my convincing statement. Um, and I'd like to thank the Center for Global Studies. Um, they helped fund this trip in addition to all these other departments. Um, thank you guys.